Wajma Sadat and I'm Yale class of 2014 and Yale Law School class of 2019. I apologize for, for the technical difficulties here. Um, as part of the 150th anniversary of Women at Yale, I'm honored to speak today with Ambassador Samantha Power, Yale class of 1992. Ambassador Power is a Pulitzer Prize winning author and former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations from 2013 to 2017. She teaches at Harvard Kennedy School of Government as Professor of Global Leadership and Public Policy, and she also teaches at Harvard Law School as Professor of Practice of Human Rights. Ambassador Power, welcome. I'm so honored to meet you today, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Um, we are eager to hear your thoughts on what change looks like today. How do you see change and change making being affected by COVID, particularly for young aspiring women leaders? Uh, well, first of all, Wasma, let me just say that I had absolutely no doubt that you would fix your tech problems, uh, given all that you've done in your life. And what you neglected to mention is that, uh, you know, in your spare time, even from America, you're still teaching Afghan students, I gather, by night. And uh, so hats off to you for not wasting a minute. Um, look, I think COVID uh, has, has given a lot of us, whatever our age, uh, and whether we had the privilege of going to Yale or, or didn't, um, a lot of uh, uh, an excuse to sort of think about our priorities, let's put it that way. Yeah. I think it's exposed, it's been referred to as the great revealer, uh, you know, showing what we all knew to be true, right, which is uh, the gross inequity in so many communities uh, in our country. It has coincided with mm -hmm. what, it, what feels like an uptick in police uh, violence uh, against African Americans and other people of color. I don't even know if it is an uptick, but certainly maybe people are circulating these videos because they have, they're doing fewer commutes and uh, getting these videos around uh, that just show uh, behavior that can't be tolerated in our society, but that has uh, gone unaddressed for too long. Uh, climate change and COVID it doesn't take a, a pandemic uh, to make you understand then when, when five of California's 10 largest fires all occur in this uh, fire season, uh, something's going on and it's not gonna get better at the current pace. So I think for most people, it's really uh, drawn attention to the causes that should summon us it also, I think, though, makes many of us feel very small. And I think that's the biggest challenge, whether, you, again, you're uh, whatever uh, gender you are, uh, whatever station of life you're in, it's how do you get the gumption to believe that you can make a difference when problems feel as big as pandemics or as great recessions or as systemic racial injustice. And so I think that's the moment, Wazma, that, mm -hmm. that, that we're having this conversation is, uh, you know, in so many minds and hearts around the country, this this dueling uh, kind of competition between that longing to make a difference and to tackle mm -hmm. problems that are so salient right now have been so exposed, and yet that trepidation of do we have what it takes, uh, you know, to to leave our mark and 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 to make an impact. Absolutely, thank you so much. Um, I actually wanted to share with you the story of how I came across your book, A Problem from Hell. Uh, in college, I was looking to find my place um, as the first woman to attend Yale. And your book exemplifies how narrative could change the world. Your life, in fact, um, has inspired me to, to make a difference in the world um, by taking the road less traveled. Um, that has always been the case for, for many leaders who really um, push themselves and push the world and challenge the world to look at it the way they want to see the world, to, to change the world, right? But today we're living in, a, in an ever more uncertain world where the, we're, we're pushed to challenge the meaning of making a difference in leadership. So what does taking the road less traveled mean to you as we're mostly homebound and zoom bound? Um, well, I mean, first of all, we're not going to be homebound and zoom bound forever. Uh, part of making so. <laughs> part of making change in the present, right, is actually addressing, uh, you know, these issues and and building the kind of community solidarity that we need 
uh, you know, house by house, neighborhood by neighborhood, state by state uh, to tackle this thing. Uh, and, and of course, we don't have to get into politics, but there are elections happening uh, all across the country, including our national elections, in which we get to give thumbs up, thumbs down on uh, on whether we embrace science, expertise, mm-hmm. um, international cooperation, you know, the kinds of things that have really hobbled uh, the U.S. response to the, to the pandemic. Um, I guess, Wazma, I would caution, I suppose, especially the young women watching against kind of making your end goal to blaze your own trail. I mean, I think mm-hmm. the most effective change makers they're, they're, they're not thinking about how they make change in the abstract, but are summoned, I feel like I've used that word once before, but by a particular uh, issue that burns in them. So for me, when I was uh, graduating from Yale, I never, no, nobody I graduated with back in 1992 would have ever predicted the path that I went on. And I certainly mm-hmm. wasn't saying, oh, when I, you know, at, at graduation, I wasn't saying, I'm going to go and be a freelance correspondent covering the war in Bosnia. And there I'm going to get so moved by ethnic cleansing and the targeting of, of people on the basis of their faith and their ethnicity that I'm going to come back. And and having you know made it as a journalist in a small way, at least in my early 20s, I'm going to give up journalism and go back to law school. And there I'm going to you know just write a paper for a class and that's going to become a book. And then that book's going to mm-hmm. fall into the hands of a, a U.S. senator who happens to be the bright young hope, uh, and you know, as it happens uh, with the name Barack Obama, that's what happened. But had I set out to do that kind of weird, jagged uh, path, I mean, there's just no way you, you could script it. But instead, what 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 happened was was more simple and more uh, kind of baseline, which was, oh gosh, like people are being put in concentration camps in Europe. I wish I could do something about it. I don't have any skills, no offense to Yale and my, and my liberal arts degree, but I, I didn't have anything I could do to help anybody, it didn't feel like. But I had you know, written for the Yale Daily News, I'd been a sports reporter, and I thought, well, maybe, since, as you said, I learned how to tell stories in one context, maybe that would be my way to kind of get over there and to learn more and to see what more impactful I, I could do. So I, I, this isn't about me, it's about, is there something that so moves you that you then become sort of uh, hungry, like a scavenger, to figure out uh, how you can, you know, m- make an impact. And and if you're driven by that cause, rather than by the idea of becoming a change maker or being an impact mm-hmm. maker or blazing a trail, just like you with your students, right? You're you're not thinking you know, I want to be the type of person who moonlights, uh, you know, doing what, I, what I'm passionate about in my home country and building a career for myself here. You're just doing mm-hmm. it because you can't not do it. I think, I think that's where people end oh, up blazing. Oh, it's the least I could do. Right. It, because you, you, it was just in you. It was, it was an impulse. It was, uh, it was a reflex, right, rather than mm-hmm. some kind of plan to become a change maker. So I, I say that not... Uh, not really even just so much in response to your question, but I do I, I do have young people who approach me and say, you know, I want to one day be U.S. ambassador to the U.N. And I say, well, that's great. But why? <laughs> what, what do you want to do there? You know, what 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 would be the things that you would seek to promote from a, a crazy position of, of privilege like like I was lucky enough to have? You know, and I, I really do think the people in those jobs, once they get those fancy titles, are so much more effective if, if, if as they as they are heading there, they know what it is they're seeking to use those platforms uh, to work mm-hmm. on. And so, so that's an argument for going deep rather than wide. I also think uh, when you can, you know, when you have the the ability to make those choices when you're young. That's that's very very helpful, especially I, uh, for me personally, because I'm a young mother. I have a nine month old at home, and um, COVID happened right after that. And I had all these thoughts about how I would use my time after law school, um, both for my country as well as for my family and for my own self development. Um, 
And so I kind of, the, this following question kind of um, speaks to that, not just about, you know, my life, of course, but the life of many other uh, friends that I have. Um, so th to begin that, I, 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 let's talk about 2020, I guess. Um, the year is admittedly far from perfect, um, but this year I'm hearing a lot of my peers th thinking, of, thinking of delaying the change they want to make or taking a break or a gap year um, to, 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 to return back to normal, whatever that might look like. And I'm curious what advice you'd give them um, in terms of whether taking a step back would be a good idea, um, where we seem to think that the world is kind of falling apart and there's more need for young people to change. What, what, does, what does change look like, I guess, for the life of a, of a young woman right now? a uh, young mother, a young aspiring leader. Um, you spoke a little bit about it, but I, I'm kind of curious to see how you would put yourself, your 25-year-old self, pre, you know, Bosnia, pre all of that, um, to the shoes of a lot of, a lot of, in the shoes of a lot of us who are uh, looking at the world in a way um, that it's never been before, really. Um, I, I'd be curious to, see, to, to hear your thoughts on that. Well, let me just say that that every uh, individual's choices are their are their own to make, and uh, I think it's very hard to know in any specific set of circumstance, you know, sort of what any particular young woman or individual is is weighing. You know, these sure. days it could be that uh, taking a gap year is about caring for an aging parent, um, sometimes through a screen, right, because of COVID. <laughs> Um, you know, sometimes taking time off is because, uh, as happened to me in the spring, for the first time in my life, I was having been a college professor and a, and a graduate school professor, a law school professor, I was stuck being a homeschooler, you know, and, and my best laid plans for, you know, whatever projects I wanted to, to work on that were bigger and out in the world and rooted in, in combating social injustice had to take a back seat to learning how the hell to get my children to listen to me <laughs> when they don't, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, leaves me with just the greatest admiration for, for, uh, for public school teachers and, and teachers generally who are doing it day to day and, and managing to get my children in particular to pay attention. So, so my point is that COVID is a curveball. Uh, layoffs are a curveball. Curveball for so many families in this country. Food banks are a curveball. You know, you don't, you didn't expect going into this year to be waiting eight hours in a giant parking lot just to get enough food to feed your family. So, with that context in mind, I would say for those mm -hmm. who aren't facing those kinds of exigencies and instead want to hit time out because they want to sort of reflect more uh, on what their purpose is in this world mm -hmm. and, you know, where it's more about, uh, you know, again, I think there is something to be said for reprioritization, no question, but for young people generally, if, if they don't have those special circumstances uh, that they're confronting, my appeal in general is that you learn more about yourself, not by thinking in the abstract about how to wait you know, this particular career path or that, or how to balance as you are and uh, in, in the, 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 you know, in the, in the most challenging phase, arguably, you know, with, with an infant. Uh, but boy, you know, if I had thought a lot about what that balance would look like and the, and the indignity of attempting to raise kids and serve in a national security job, if I had thought about all those things before I got pregnant or before I had my kids, it, it may well have paralyzed me. You, you can get paralyzed by these uh, different pathways and by the incommensurate weighting of variables that that are just really sort of different values. And 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 what what I know about about most women, uh, even in really tough circumstances uh, like the one that you've come from, is that women find a way to figure things out <laughs> and are the most mm -hmm crazy capable uh, multitaskers imaginable, but you don't know that necessarily about yourself. Uh, the first baby I ever held was my own. My, my girlfriends, you know, most of whom my, were friends I made in Bosnia, hadn't, most of them had not had, uh, had babies uh, before me. And, and so you just, 
you know, you if you're if you're if you're fortunate, you you will you will be in a circumstance to figure it out. Whereas sometimes you can talk yourself out of taking risks, whether in your personal life or in your professional life. Uh, and and whereas if you're in the, the scrum and you're out there trying to make a difference, you can learn about yourself. You know, I'm not actually that good at this, but I am good mm-hmm. at one dimension of this, and I'm going to take that and see if I can deploy that somewhere else. And so. I think ex- there's no substitute for experience, um, and and I, I actually just had office hours with a student of mine, and I in the middle of the office hours I said, I said you're overthinking, and so I, I, that is my bias is to do your thinking if you can, and again if you're if you don't have these other uh, competing tugs, uh, but to do your thinking in, in the world, and and given climate and inequality and our own polarization and and division and hate mongering and everything that's happening here, the more of you who are part of getting into that scrum sooner, uh, the better from my, from my vantage point, looking, uh, looking at you and knowing what possibilities uh, you, you have ahead of you and what talents you have to contribute. Thank you so much. I also hearing your thoughts and um, just thinking about my life and and a lot of my friends and and peers, I think that there might be a lot of hidden opportunities that we never knew of or aware of, or they didn't even exist uh, pre this huge health crisis and pandemic. So maybe there are some some things that are out there for us that will probably make the lives of those better that we had no idea. Well, I must end there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for for giving us your time. And it's so nice to finally meet you. Thank you for inspiring so many of us. Um, Thank you for the audience who are here. Um, Thanks all, and have a great evening. Thank you. 